Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Alesis has a special place in my heart. The very first Bad Gear episode was about a piece of Alesis gear and aided multi-track recorders are one of the root causes of my hair loss. Today we are going to talk about the Micron. This 2004 virtual analog synthesizer is the shrink rate version of the big and bulky ion keyboard Alesis brought to the market one year earlier. An understandable business decision. Everybody wanted compact synths based on tried and tested technology like the Microcork or a few years later the Novation Sio and Roland JDXi. I'm beginning to see a pattern here. At the first glance, the Alesis Micron is breaking all the boxes. A robust Lego-shaped plastic enclosure, a minimalist set of physical controls, a more than usable after-touch-less keypad that is an integral part of the synth engine's UI and, most importantly, a backlit pitch bend wheel. The rear panel is clean and tidy and it's great to not only see audio inputs but also a full MIDI trio. As soon as you start flipping through the presets and there are a lot of presets on this thing, you will notice that the underlying synth engine must be quite complex. All the basics like basses, leads, and pads are there. You can process external signals, drum sounds with a dedicated sequencer, an arpeggiator, a polyphonic phrase recorder, and two multi-FX units. All this synthesizer goodness comes with an enormous amount of parameters and Alesis expects you to operate it with an 80s cell phone display and the UI of a coffee maker. The synth engine is 8 voice polyphonic with 3 oscillators per voice, analog drift, unison, Sync, FM, a noise generator, a ring modulator, two filters with ultra smooth resolution. and a large variety of classic filter emulations, a distortion stage, three loopable envelopes, two LFOs, a sample and hold modulation source, custom modulation curves and, last but not least, a military grade modulation matrix. Pooh, that's a lot. The parameters are lined up, single file in one seemingly endless menu and although this sounds like torture, Alesis included a few little twists that make tweaking the synth bearable. Not cool, but bearable. You can jump to every section of the synth engine using a shortcut, assigning a knob to a parameter works like a charm. and the parameters mostly follow the signal path of the Micron. Given this feature o get on it doesn't come as a surprise that the Micron is multi-timbral and there's a dedicated button for turning off the sequences on the fly. 
The manual is great, iron patches can be loaded into the Micron and those of you who want to tone down the skill level can use a software editor. I've read many complaints about the build quality of the Micron, but this one works perfectly, Miley Cyrus used one so it must be good and the synth engine is supposedly identical to the one of the Akai Miniac. The synth isn't as easy to find as you might think and prices seem to be completely random at the moment. The Micron is probably the most feature-laden compact synth keyboard out there. Did Alesis go too far when they put so much synth into such a little box? You have already heard the Alesis Micron in today's intro tune. This will most probably not be to everyone's liking. I wanna know how far we can get with the synth's 8 voices of polyphony. voices are not much for an arrangement like this and I have to be more careful with the internal levels, but I like the sounds and smoothness of the filter. The rhythm section and sequences of the Micron are surprisingly powerful. We should give them a try synced to the Beatstep Pro. quite a few drum machines that don't pack as much punch as the Micron's rhythm section. The workflow doesn't have the finesse of a specialized groove box, but no one expected an electron-worthy user experience. I wouldn't describe the Micron as the most analog-sounding VA synth. Still, it does have a certain drama and mystery to it. Time for some cosmic horror brain dance from the Uncanny Valley. As a fan of the Microcorg, it is interesting to get my hands on a synth that is so similar and yet so different to Korg's OG Zero Years hipster keyboard. While the Microcorg turned out to be the more successful instrument, the Micron is based on a much deeper synth engine. And this is both a blessing and a curse. I assume making patches on its bigger sibling is very productive and great fun, but it takes a healthy dose of willpower to actually create sounds from scratch on the Micron. So what stupid thing do I have to do now? Buy an iron? Or convince one of the seemingly countless space billionaires that I'm their lost son? Buy a leases for one million dollars and force them to build a dedicated groove box based on a 20 year old synth engine. Sorry, no more space for big and bulky keyboards. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.